that uh, you have about five minutes worth uh, to make sure that we do have time for people's comments and questions. Okay, I will. Uh, I will try to move fast. Um, thank you. I'm glad you glad you told me that. Um, I'm Mike Bates. I'm with the Mobility Group. Uh, we prepared the transportation uh, uh, assessment with the county and work closely with the county. It's a comprehensive study. Um, and what I wanted to do today is um, just checking my clock here. Okay, um, is is give you a a kind of view of the context. I mean, there's a lot of numbers and technical information in the report, but I'm hoping to give you some context in what 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 that all means. So um, a little bit of background uh, based on where uh, Oakview feel their patrons are coming from. We think about 65% of the traffic coming to the arena will come by the freeway and about a third by surface streets. Obviously, there's two freeway interchanges, um, Cook and Washington. Um, again, we're estimating about 75% of the traffic would come to and from the West based on demographics and market area, and 30% to and from the East. Um, we're estimating that approximately 15 to 20% of arena traffic could use the Cook Street corridor in Palm Desert immediately south of the freeway interchange. That percentage decreases the further south you go to, um, to about five or 7% by the time you get south of uh, Country Club Drive. And approximately eight to 9% of traffic would use the Washington Street corridor uh, immediately south of the freeway interchange. Tony? Um, as Tony alluded to, you know, the, PM, the PM peak hour of your roadway system there is typically 4 to 5 p.m. And that's the hour that I think most people have in their mind when they're thinking of commute traffic and the highest traffic in the evening uh, or the afternoon. Um, we look very closely at the data and the, the, the existing roadway volumes do reduce substantially after 5 p.m. to the point where uh, between 6 and 7 p.m., the existing traffic volumes on the roadways are about 50% lower than uh, the 5 to 6 p.m. hour. Um, because the arena events would start at 7, uh, only 20% of the arena traffic would actually occur in that evening peak hour, and 70% would occur in the 6 to 7 p.m. peak hour. So uh, when the highest arena traffic occurs, it's added to background traffic that is much lower than uh, you're, you're used to seeing in the PMP car. So just trying to give you a context here in, in the PMP car between five and six, typical hockey game would generate about 620 vehicle trips. Um, in the Cook Street corridor, that would uh, probably amount to about a 6% increase over the existing northbound volumes during the PM peak hour and about 3% over the total intersection volumes. Uh, the Cook Street and I-10 ramps, it would be an increase of about 12%. And over on the east on the Washington Street corridor, it would be an increase of about 1% to 5% over existing PM peak hour volumes. I, I mentioned this to demonstrate that, yes, the arena will generate traffic, but uh, our studies show that they are incremental increases rather than order of magnitude increases um, on these two corridors in Palm Desert. A pre-event hour, six to seven, we look conservatively at concert sellouts, which would occur relatively infrequently compared to other events. Uh, that would generate about 3,160 trips in this pre-event hour. And that would increase uh, traffic on the Cook Street corridor northbound by anywhere from 15 to 30 percent, depending where you are on the corridor. And when you take into account the overall intersection volumes, um, 7 to 14 percent. But as I mentioned, in that particular hour, the, it's being added to traffic that is 50 percent lower than um, the, the typical commuting PM peak hour. And you're seeing similar, um, similar types of incremental increases in the, Was in the Washington Street corridor. And then this occurs relatively infrequently for the sellout events. For the more frequent uh, hockey league games, the additional traffic would be lower, probably about 30% lower. Okay, Tony, let's go 
Got to keep moving here, man. Yeah. Got a little lag. Got a little lag. Lag. Here we go. Did the five minutes include lag or not? No, just kidding. There you go. <laughs> so the principal strategy for dealing with uh, arena traffic is to prepare what we call a transportation management plan. This is a very common approach for event facilities because traffic does not occur every day and it only occurs for a short period of time before and after the event. So a transportation management plan or TMP can really focus on the efficient management of operating traffic during the hours of events. These have proven very effective at many events uh, throughout the state and the nation. And our study has shown that with the uh, elements of the TMP that we're recommending, uh, we'd be able to provide sufficient intersection capacities to handle the arena traffic. What is a TMP? Um, in general, uh, it will include a, a very mobile-friendly website to give patrons a lot of information about getting to and from the arena. There would be fixed directional signage on the streets. There will be changeable message boards, which you've probably seen um, on the freeway and the surface streets to enable the arena to effectively manage how traffic, uh, which routes it takes in and out of the arena. When you get to specific intersections, there may be temporary changes in signal timing to reflect the, uh, the slightly different flows. Traffic control officers for manual traffic direction are, are often a key element of TMPs. They're very effective uh, during these pre and post event hours in manually directing traffic rather than allowing on the signals, which tend to be less flexible during those hours. And there may be temporary lane reassignments, particularly up by the freeway interchange and to the north, where uh, you use cones and delineators. You may have seen these elsewhere, um, where you can you can modify lanes and increase lanes in one direction or one turn movement to provide additional temporary capacity. Um, we would anticipate some of those temporary lane changes could occur um, at the north end of Cook Street on the uh, on the ramps and at Varna to handle the traffic coming off the freeway. We would anticipate traffic control officers at these four intersections, again, to help traffic move, not only for arena traffic, but also for existing traffic on the system. So it's handled equitably, and uh, we're making sure that existing traffic can get through these intersections. And then on the east side on Washington, um, again, uh, possible signal timing changes or control officers. And I think we have a map. So we put together this map that shows these four measures of signals and traffic control officers, temporary lane changes, changeable message boards, and in, in one or two places uh, north of the freeway, temporary long lane closures to help give you a sense of um, what might be included in this TMP. This will be developed by the county in coordination with all the relevant jurisdictions and relevant stakeholders, including homeowner associations, a very cooperative process that will be developed over the next few months um, before you know, opens. Um, and then the county will will implement it. So um, I don't know how close I came to five. I hope I'm pretty close, but hopefully that gave you a sense of the context of uh, arena traffic. Uh, very close. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Nick to finish us out. Is that right, Nick? If that's okay. That's if we have time. Yeah. Uh, you might want to say if your comments for the conclusion. Uh, does that sound workable? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there are two ways that uh, folks can offer your questions or comments. I do want to give priority uh, to Palm Desert residents who live uh, just south of the freeway in what we call our North Sphere. Uh, so I'll ask others to hold off initially and uh, self-monitor so that residents who are most proximate to the project get a chance to ask questions. And the two ways to do that are to click the reactions uh, choice uh, which if you're on a PC is at the bottom 
of the screen, one of the options under reactions is raise hand. And that will show us on the participants panel that you would like to speak. If you're shy, uh, you can also put something in the chat. We already have uh, five or six questions there and we'll try to get through as many of those as possible. Uh, but if we have Bomb Desert North Sphere residents, I'll ask you to raise your hand. And as I give you time for that, uh, let me say just very briefly uh, what Bomb Desert's posture has been uh, concerning the proposed arena. We, of course, with many others, are excited at the prospect of economic stimulation. Um, additionally, we want to make certain that now is the time uh, to look at any possible impacts to Palm Desert's operations as an adjoining city, any costs that might result from those impacts, and frankly, uh, to ask the developers to address those. We just received uh, the technical analyses at the end of March with hearings scheduled to take place in April. Uh, so we've been pedaling fast to do our due diligence uh, so that we can participate collaboratively. And of course, hearing from our residents is a big part of that. Uh, what kind of impacts? I'll just give you one for instance. Uh, Mr. Bolton mentioned the Ontario Arena as in some respects comparable. And our peers there indicate that one of the big impacts they've experienced is an increase in collisions uh, from people leaving events who may drive differently uh, than folks commuting to or from work. Uh, so that's an example of the sort of thing that we want to make sure gets correctly analyzed now uh, so that nobody's surprised later. And we're expecting that it should be possible to do that collaboratively. Uh, so let me go to Carlos Garcia, who I see has his hand up. Would you please unmute yourself and tell us what you would like to share? Hi, um, I'm actually just worried specifically about traffic. I'm a big supporter of the concept. I think this is a wonderful operation, a wonderful idea, but I'm really concerned about the, pro the, the traffic because I live nearby. I live very close to the freeway, actually, uh, between Monterey and, and Cook. And um, I, there are a couple of things that happen. I mean, coming west, the freeway goes from four lanes to three at, after Monterey. So it loses a lane. So there will always be a little bit more compressed traffic after from that point on and this will you know periodically sporadically pretty much make cook uh, the cook exit unusable um it, it'll it'll just be really slow and locals will you know try to you know get caught in traffic and get upset so they, they will they, they won't have any other options because monterey is already a very busy uh, exit for the locals um there is an exit right ready to go that's not built at portola and it would actually, if that were actually completed, it would actually help the city uh, residents really maneuver around without having to rely on Cook um, because Cook will be the principal exit for your, as you pointed out, for your, uh, for your venue. So um, have you looked into that at all? Have you thought about that at all? Have you, real, you know, are you expanding Warner Road? Because uh, that's only like mostly one lane each way. Um, there are lots of questions about traffic. I know it only happens periodically, uh, sporadically, but when you get caught in it and it, it, you're, it, it doesn't feel sporadic, it feels just annoying. And it's happened to me many times. And then we lived in LA near big venues, uh, near the Greek theater. So I know what this is about. Thank you. 
uh, Mr. Bolton, does uh, someone on your team want to speak to uh, what's planned for the Portola interchange and improvement of Varner Road? We also had a question in the chat about of Varner Road, particularly west of Cook. Uh, Tony or, or Michael, do you want to? Okay, I'm trying to mute myself. I can take a stab at that. Um, and uh, appreciate all your comments and good questions. I understand them. Um, our studies conservatively um, did not assume the Portola Avenue interchange. Um, our understanding is it's not scheduled at this point. Um, I know there's been a lot of work on it, but we wanted to do a conservative analysis. Um, so we did not uh, assume that that would be in existence. Um, we, we have done an extensive analysis of the Cook Street corridor by the freeway and the interchanges and the freeway mainline and the freeway ramps. And uh, our analysis concludes that, yes, obviously there would be additional traffic with the arena, but these uh, transportation management plan measures to um, temporarily enhance capacity and, and operate traffic uh, will allow, we will provide sufficient capacity to get people off the freeway. Um, we again, conservatively did not anticipate or uh, think that people would uh, use Monterey Avenue to any great degree. Um, we have, they have the ability to uh, direct traffic with these message boards to the routings they would prefer. So I don't believe from the arena's perspective and John can add here that there is uh, any plan to widen Varna west of Cook? Uh, thank you. And uh, Kay Van Zant has her hand up. Kay, would you please unmute yourself? Yes, hi. I live in the uh, the area that you're talking about. I live uh, on Monterey Avenue, uh, south of the freeway. And I cannot imagine any possible reason why we wouldn't want to do this. Um, I look at the discussions on the traffic patterns and everything else, but when you look at what's happening at the time that it's happening, I believe personally that it will have a minimal impact on what we do. From a positive standpoint, if these events are taking place at night, there's a very good possibility that people will come in and plan to spend the weekend or the night, which means they will be looking for hotels and they will be looking for restaurants. And maybe some of the businesses that we are losing through this pandemic issue, maybe they can reopen and restart their businesses because of the additional traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Um, let me open this up to others who may wish to raise your hand. Uh, while you're doing that, we'll pick up some of the additional questions in the chat. We had a question from Peter. Uh, will Avenue 38 be repaired and repaved? That sounds like a Michael Bates question. Yes, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> um, I'm assuming the question refers to Avenue 38 between um, Varna Road and Washington Street. Um, there currently would be no plan to widen or improve Avenue 38 as a part of this project. We would not see that as a um, major traffic corridor, or in fact, a traffic corridor hardly for this arena, it would all come up Varner Road from Washington. So I guess the answer uh, at this point is no. Okay. And uh, Sandra Schultz has her hand raised. Sandra, would you please unmute? Okay. Uh, I'm Sandra Schultz. I'm also the vice president of the Desert Figure Skating Club. A lot of people may not know we still have a figure skating club that was founded in the city of Palm Desert about 30 years ago. 
And what I want to say is that we now have, we're looking at a world-class developer who's planning to build a world-class ice sports facility, the likes of which this desert has never, ever seen. And I can tell you for the skating community, we still have one and they are suffering as we speak, driving hours, untold hours every week to continue skating in Riverside, Ontario, Yorba Linda, Irvine. This is just a tremendous burden for our skaters. And I can't tell you how anxious all of us are to have a proper regulation ice sports facility here in the desert. And I certainly hope that the city of Palm Desert understands how important to the community economically this will be as we've been ravaged by this pandemic. And I'm wondering, is there something the city of Palm Desert can do to aid and abet this project? And I certainly hope that we're not looking a gift horse in the mouth here because I see nothing but upsides, not only for the skating community, which will grow once again, once we have this facility, but it will help all of us and all the commerce that it will bring to the city of Palm Desert. I don't see a downside here at all. And I really hope that the city council is behind the project and willing to support it and help it in any way it can. Uh, thank you. And iPad 3 is waving. Uh, sir, would you please unmute yourself, give us your name and your comment, and then I see a couple of her uh, raised uh, hands. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I'm a Robert Frischette. I'm a 40 years resident of Palm Desert. Uh, nationality, I'm Canadian, and during the pandemic, unfortunately, all, all of Canadians have been coming here, but as you all well know, uh, this project would be welcoming, be welcoming by a lot, a lot of residents in the Valley, <clears throat> including a lot of Canadians uh, residents that come here every single year for many, many years. Now, with that said, I'm, I'm completely 100%, you know, for the project and I was, very happy that it comes closer to my town, to Palm Desert, from Palm Spring to here. Uh, I have the shirt from Palm Springs, and I've had the opportunity to meet some of the Oakview people, and <clears throat> like a, they're a world class organization. And so, if anyone would have concern about traffic, about uh, we all we all here in Palm Desert know every single year for the last many years that we had the Coachella Valley Festival. We have Coachella Valley, we have tennis, we have big, huge, major event with no really major problem. It just brings us a lot of economic uh, growth for the Valley. So we're not, we're not new to this. We, we've dealt, Indian Wells dealt with the tennis garden, Indios dealt with the traffic, uh, I'm hoping there would not be no major concern about traffic or enlarging streets or off ramps. I'm sure it would be get done accordingly of what this arena would be. Uh, again, it'd be a big plus. I see hotels being built as right now off Cook. There's three more that were already recently built and they're unfortunately empty right now because of the pandemic. So I think we're ready for this. I mean, we're ready for this as soon as we can, as soon as possible. So again, I was just emphasizing that hopefully there's not, there will be concern, there will be issues, but again, we're not new to this. We, we, we've dealt with World National Coachella Festival with hundreds of thousands of people coming here, hundreds of thousands. We're looking at seven to 8,000 people at this arena for the event. Uh, this is easy for us, easy day. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Thank you. And uh, 
I see a couple identified as Hampton Inn and Sweets with your hand up. Would you please unmute and uh, share with us? Hello, we're uh, the owners of the Hampton Inn and Suites off of uh, Cook Street in Palm Desert. My dad built the first uh, the hotel there in 2003. And when my dad built the hotel, there was nothing at that exit. There was our hotel and the gas station. And we have seen that exit grow um, and develop to what it is today. And we are actually very excited for the Serena because after we built our hotel, the area has had development of three new hotels. The Homewood Suites came, the Fairfield came. There's another hotel that's under construction. Um, events do bring us a lot of business um, and that uh, our valley is event oriented. The past uh, 15 years that I've been in business, our summers are very slow here with tourism and the hotel occupancy drops down. The events, the money we make in the events, I save and that helps me survive my summer months. So these events are very helpful for us hotel owners. And so we are very excited uh, about the arena. And um, just the gentleman before me said traffic, you know, it could be controlled. Uh, their traffic plan is pretty good. Uh, having, you know, all the cones and the, the signage and everything, it, it's, it could be controlled. And so I think it would be beneficial for the whole area. Um, us as a hotel, you know, we generate and the city gets the TOT tax and that in general generates that helps the residents. So the city benefits and then the residents benefit as well. So we're very, uh, we're looking forward to this arena. Thank you. I see uh, three more hands we will take and then we'll try to wrap up. Uh, Joy Me. Hi there, Kathleen. Um, this is Joy Medici, and Hi. I just wanted to add that I live off of Jefferson and Miles and I've watched the Coachella um, Fest go by over the years and we have never had any problem getting out of our property, getting onto Jefferson to be able to go to 111. Uh, it's been highly organized with the new off ramps. It, everything goes very smooth. And I think that this, doing this for Palm Desert and for the rest of Coachella Valley is a wonderful thing. It encourages kids to be in sports and that's where we want them, not on the street. So I say, yes, let's do this. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Joy. Um, Michael Nowacki. Hi, uh, I, I moved here from uh, New Caney, Connecticut about three years ago uh, and live here in Palm Desert. And uh, I can tell you the economic impact of the building of ice rinks uh, in uh, the area around Stamford, Connecticut resulted in NBC Sports moving their facilities out of all the areas that they had located elsewhere because the ice rink attracted such attention and attracted such uh, employees. Uh, I don't know whether or not an economic impact study was done as part of the proposal to the town, but I think the gentleman that spoke uh, earlier who's from Canada, I can guarantee you that the Canadian people who are not here right now would be avid supporters of this rink uh, they come during hockey season, which uh, obviously starts, uh, uh, you know, once COVID is over, we hope uh, hockey will start in October, November, et cetera. They will be avid participants here uh, in regards to supporting a local hockey team. We also need to keep in mind that there are so many people from the state of Washington, and this team uh, is a minor league franchise the Seattle of the new Seattle Kraken team. All you need to do is to look at what happened to Las Vegas. When they bought that, they brought that hockey team to Las Vegas. It has been a centerpiece. Uh, keep in mind that people attend the casinos here. Uh, they're active, uh, if you will, in uh, supporting other activities when they come uh, to Agua Caliente. So you have all sorts of reasons to believe that this uh, uh, stadium will have an enormous positive impact on the restaurants that have been devastated by COVID, uh, et cetera, that are in that Northern tier that you just spoken about. So all I can say is from a uh, person who uh, had a son that started playing ice hockey when he was eight years old, uh, played all the way till he was in college, 
They all start with little cones on a rink. That's how they all start. And it's some of the great things that uh, grandparents can bring their kids to uh, during the summertime here to attract people to participate. And I can guarantee you a ice hockey rink around here during the summertime is a great respite from the heat. Uh, thank you. And uh, Scott White, you'll be our last person to share. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity to speak and it's great to hear everybody's voices on this critical, important project. Uh, we've been following this now for a long time and I just can't even um, really share how important this project is for our Valley and for this destination. It's a year round venue, it's an indoor venue. It's gonna put us on a stage across the globe, um, highlighting all of the entertainment options that are happening here. It's really gonna be important for the tourism industry, which is going through a long road of recovery after the pandemic. And we're still going through all of that. Coming here from San Antonio and Phoenix and seeing the power that arenas bring to a destination is incredible. Uh, the economic impact is unsurmountable. And the fact that it's being funded 100% with private dollars is remarkable. So I know we had a lot of speakers today, a lot of positive comments, but on behalf of the tourism industry, the number one industry in the Valley, this couldn't come at a better time. And I wanna thank Oakville Group for picking our Valley. They had a lot of places they could have chosen and to pick our location is um, really, a, it's, it's just a phenomenal opportunity for our destination. And I think a lot of our hotels and restaurants are gonna benefit from this as long as, long, as, long as there's our residents as well. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. We're 100% behind it. We can't wait till it's open and we will support it all the way through to the end. Thank you.